Alta just lies through their teeth about that. It doesn't happen. So this is why we get paid so little. You're not getting paid for that. If I would have known that they weren't gonna pay me to do that, I think I would have reconsidered. It just got old fast. You don't get paid to come in that first or second date. No, nobody tells you what to do. And the hair done, perfect. Makeup done, perfect. Cute outfit on, great. Also a lie. You don't get gratis. Get no training at all. The CEO might just like pop in sometime. She thought I was so incompetent. Hi, I'm so excited to film today's video. I knew from the second that I applied that if I got the job, I was gonna be making this video. I made a stuff that I want to talk about, a script, and there's just so much to say. I don't want to forget anything. I'm so excited, and let's just get right into the video, because I'm bad at intros. The reason I applied to Ulta is because my Ulta is five minutes away from my apartment. I can go there once a week, pick up one thing, and it's no big deal. I was in there one day, and I remember seeing these two girls sitting on the floor. They were workers, and they were sitting on the floor stocking stuff, and they were like having a good time like talking, they were friends, and I was like, oh, this would be really fun if I like needed the needed like an extra job or if I wanted to do something extra because right now I have an office job. I've been working there for over a year. I have like two big positions there, so I just thought if I wanted something extra that would be fun. I went home. They sent me a survey about the thing that I bought because I think they do that every time you buy something. So I filled it out and I was like, maybe they'll send me an application because I said like fairly good at makeup, all that kind of stuff. And then a little bit later, I got another email asking to put an application in for seasonal workers. So I immediately be applied because I thought to myself, like, I kind of manifested this because I wanted to get a job there. I thought it would be fun. I wanted to try it out. And it was just seasonal, so I also didn't feel bad. Like, I didn't feel like I was committing too much since the job that I have now is my, like, what I do and I don't need another job, but... I did anyways. And then a month after I put my application in, I got a call from the general manager and I was looking stuff up online about other people's experiences watching videos like this. And everybody says that it takes forever for the managers to get back with you after you put your application in, you don't hear anything back for like a month. And so that's normal, I guess. And it also, what was really common is that you get no training at all. And that's also true. They don't train you whatsoever. When she called me, she wanted to schedule my interview for that Friday, and I think it was a Monday or a Tuesday. And I was like, okay, but like I have another job, Friday isn't super convenient because I do pay, like I have to pay people on Fridays, and it's just a busy day for me. So, okay, I'll take the last spot available, because she had a 4 o'clock, and she made it seem like if you're not available on Friday, we're not interviewing you. So I took the last spot, it was like a 4 or 5 o'clock on a Friday. To my interview, I wore a black long sleeve dress with black tights, booties, and like a burgundy scarf. Everybody from videos like this said, wear all black, it's the uniform, whatever. It's not the uniform, you can wear orange, pink, purple, black, white, gray, nude. The uniform is super easy, you just have to look cute. And so I don't think it matters what you wear to your interview as long as you look cute and like professional. They want you wearing pink and purple and bubbly orange and whatever so look cute at your interview i saw one girl come in for an interview when i was working and she had on like black dress pants and like a jacket and was, i she she just didn't she didn't get the job and she didn't look cute and she came like way too early too so when i came in for my interview i had no idea what to do so i just went to the register and was like um i'm looking for the general manager and i said her name it's so important for any job ever to know the name of the person that's interviewing you you want to go in and say i have an interview with and state their name because that makes you look like you know what you're doing and it shows that you paid attention to the person who called you so it's so important to know who called you who said they're going to be interviewing you and go in and ask for that person and not just say oh, i don't know i have an interview i don't know know who's interviewing you at any job the girl at the register went to get the manager and I stood around for like 5 to 10 minutes. I was 5 to 10 minutes early. I think I was 5 minutes early. But I felt like I was standing around forever because I stood at the front and just like stood there and didn't know what to do. And like workers were like asking me if I needed help finding anything. And I was like, no, I'm just waiting on the manager for my interview. It's fine. Like I said, the other girl, she arrived 
excessively early. She was like 25 to 30 minutes early to an interview and she just like walked around the store the whole time and the manager was being really petty and just like helped people around the store like in front of her face like sorry this is when it's scheduled so I'm gonna go pretend to be busy while you just like walk around the store. So that was just like really mean like she didn't need to do that but she also didn't need to be 25 to 30 minutes early for the interview. But the general manager came out, she led me to the back uh, to her office and she went she asked me like a little bit about myself and of course like I had all this stuff planned to say and like try to like tie it into beauty and makeup and stuff and so I like started going and she was like uh-huh uh-huh okay so what's the availability like and like did not care at all she went right into availability and uh the job that I have now I work from home I work a little bit in the office I make my own schedule I have deadlines I just have to get stuff done it's not super hourly it's I mean, there's certain days I have to be in the office and I have to be at meetings and whatever, but for the most part, it's very flexible. That's what I told her is like, there's certain like, Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings aren't great because I do have to run into the office those mornings, like really quickly, just for a little bit. And for the, other than that, like very flexible. She's like, okay, great. So what are you looking for? I think she asked after that about my pay, like what I wanted to be paid. Oh, and she also asked if I feel comfortable signing people up for the loyalty program and asking people to sign up for a MasterCard. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. I've never worked in retail before. And I told her I've never worked in retail before and she knew that. And I think I also said with the loyalty program, I was like, yeah, like I'm a loyalty member and I know like how great the benefits are. So like I would love to sign people up because I know that it's worth it but it's also like free it's easy to sign up so there's no like downfall to signing up for it it's not like the mastercard where like if you don't pay it off it don't really like mess up your credit or something it's like the loyalty program is nothing she asked what i wanted to make hourly i told her i was like well i just turned down a job for 12.50 because i was looking for like a couple extra hours and the reason i turned down that job is because it was really far away Scheduling wasn't super convenient and I was doing that same exact job like when I was in college and I was making $17.50 when I left and when I started they paid me $13.50 and then they offered me $12.50 at like a different hospital and I was like yeah obviously not so I told her in the interview I was like well I just turned down a job for $12.50 because it just wasn't gonna be it wasn't really gonna work out with like scheduling and the distance and I was like this job it's five minutes away my apartment's right down the road so I would be willing to take 10 an hour and she was like okay I'd like to extend you an offer for ten dollars an hour I just had to go home that night accept the email because you have to accept the offer and like do like a digital signature thing and now the fun part starts so I had to come in next Tuesday that was a Friday I came in on Tuesday to start you have to like watch videos do a little orientation thing and I came in, I was there for two to three hours trying to sign up. I had done my makeup perfect, I did my hair perfect, I had a cute outfit on, I went in and I was like ready to start. I was excited and I go to log on and it says that something about like HR, human resources, isn't letting me sign on to whatever it is. And so my manager, she's like, oh, just reset your password because she thought that I just like forgot my password. So I would reset it go on my email, do the whole reset thing, log back in. Oh, it didn't let me. She was like, oh, reset your password. She thought I was so incompetent that within seconds, I was just forgetting my password and had to like reset it over and over. So I did that for two to three hours. And then she said, we're just gonna have to send you home because what was it? The the, the IT, IT wasn't answering her phone call and so she's like, I don't know, I have to send you home, you can come back. So when I left, she was like, this girl that's at the door, she's gonna have to check you out before you go. I didn't know this, I've never worked with retail before, but I guess they have to check your bags, your pockets, everything before you leave. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. Like, I'm not, I don't have anything to hide, whatever. So she told me the name of the girl and I'm gonna call her Kendall because I'm not gonna use real names, so. Kendall had to check me out so I went to the front like hey I heard Kendall needs to check me out before I go and so she comes around and we have to, she's like over here and you had to be like right in front of the door there was like a different color tile in front of the door and you had to be on that tile and she's like okay you have to empty everything out of your purse I took my purse that I tossed everything in it had snacks and tampons and extra food and shoe I had a pair of shoes in there and I was like oh okay so I got down on my hands and knees and I pulled everything out all over the floor turned my pockets inside out and she's like yeah um 
most people don't bring anything to work. And I was like, well, Kendall, if I want to bring my purse to work, it looks like it's your job to check us out, Kendall, because general manager said that Kendall needed to check me out. And if Kendall's job is to check me out, it looks like you're going to have to see everything from my purse on the floor then because it looks like it's your job, Kendall. So I came back on Tuesday, no, Thursday. I came back on Thursday and my hair done, perfect. Makeup done, perfect. Cute outfit on, great. And the same thing happened again. And I thought, well, at least I'm getting paid to be here. Most companies have a policy. If you come in, they have to pay you for at least two to three hours, depending on the company. And they can either send you home and pay you for these two to three hours, or they can give you like, little things to do for two to three hours before they send you home because you wasted your time to get ready to go in you took the day to not do anything else you had that day scheduled out to do work it's just like if you have an appointment and you cancel your appointment last minute you have to pay a cancellation fee because that person isn't going to be able to fit somebody else into where your appointment was companies are supposed to respect their employees time and pay them for at least two to three hours depending on how long they were there because they drove in to be there. So I thought this is fine, at least I'm getting paid because I came in. They did not tell me. You don't get paid to be there the first two, day or two that you come in. You're not getting paid for that. You don't get paid to come in that first or second day. No, N nobody's paying you for that. You're just wasting your time and I would if I would have known that they weren't gonna pay me to do that I think I would have reconsidered but the general manager did tell me you'll at least get a good gratis when you start I'll make sure that you get a nice gratis bag for like all the trouble that you've been through also a lie you don't get gratis they don't give you Alta never gives you any gratis, but they will tell you if you sign up loyalty customers, loyalty accounts, you get gratis for it. If you sign up a lot of MasterCards, you get gratis for it. For all this trouble that you've gone through, you get gratis for it. I never got gratis once. You do not get gratis. Alta just lies through their teeth about that. It doesn't happen. It won't happen. Just block that out of your mind because they're not gonna do that for you. No, they're no. Mm -mm. Doesn't happen. And even, I even thought to myself after the second day, I was like, maybe I should tell them, hey, you know, I don't think this is going to work out because this just seems a little too unorganized in here for me. Um, I'll just give you my bank account info. You can pay me for the days I came in. Thinking that they were going to pay me for the days I was there. No, they didn't. But I, I was like, no, I'll just, so we'll stick it out. We'll stick it out. Finally, the third day I come in, I log in, I get my paper assigned, I watch some videos. The only video I remember is there's one about how you can't tell, you can't like stop people from stealing. They just recommend that you like compliment what they're stealing. So be like, oh yeah, that's a really great lipstick or whatever. Just if you see somebody stealing it, just compliment the thing that they stole. Um, And then they also, there was one about how like the CEO might just like pop in sometime, but that's, that's a lie. That's not gonna happen, at least at my store, because my store is really small, but maybe like big cities or something, but that was comical, because I knew, I knew that wasn't true from, from the video. It was cheesy enough. So I was scheduled a four hour shift that day when I was watching videos. I was scheduled four hours, or maybe it was three, I don't know, to watch videos, and I know that I was done watching the videos 30 to 45 minutes before my shift was over so i told the manager hey i'm done now what and she was like oh just shadow somebody at the registers and the girl that she had me shadowing at the register was also seasonal had been there a couple days didn't really know what she was doing but whatever she was fun it was a good time and it was great to get to know her and then as i was leaving the manager was like hey do you think you come in tomorrow i think it was like 8 a.m and i was like yeah I'm eager to start at this point, now that I'm like ready to go, um, sure, I'll come in tomorrow morning, first thing, great. So I did, I was scheduled at the exact time the store opened, and nobody tells you what to do, but I was like, I want to be a little early, I don't want to walk in exactly when my shift starts, you know, you want to walk in and have time to put, hang up your coat and whatever. So I didn't know what to do, because nobody tells you. And I saw a girl walking up to the door and I was like, oh, she looks like she looks there. I'm going to follow behind her. So I did. 
and I think she had a key and she got in and she was like, oh hi, good morning. And I walk in behind her and a girl come from around the register comes around and she goes, um, we're not open yet. Okay. Hey, we opened in a few minutes. Hi, how can I help you? We'll be open in one second. No. <laughs> I go back to hang up my coat and the manager is back there. She's like, you're going to be on the register when we open. I'm like, great. I've never attached to the register. Yesterday I, I shadowed. And so she goes into panic mode, full chaos. This is just another day. Like it's always unorganized like this, but she's panic, chaos, calls people, literally has to call people to come in because we have nobody to work the register but a girl that's never touched it before, and I've never worked in retail either, so even better. And so she's calling people like, we need you in ASAP because we have nobody to work on the register. Just another day though. Nothing, like, nothing new. A big thing that I realized was I did not learn who any of the managers were besides the girl that did my interview for the, at least two weeks. The b I dumped all my shit out on the floor for was a manager. The one, the one that says, yeah, we don't really bring stuff here. The girl that said, um, we're not open yet. A manager. What? Girls, this is why we get paid so little. Go to college. Learn how to be a manager. Learn how to talk to people. What the f***? Where did they find these people? There's gotta be better people out there. There was one other manager that I remember. And when I first met her, I was like, oh wow, she's really sweet, she's nice, cool. And quickly became my least favorite. I think she wanted to be a good manager because she knew that like nobody that worked there was management material. So she wanted to like really, really boss people around. So she would tell you like, it happened, like this happened every single day she was there. I'd be at the register and she would say, you need to clean baskets. And there would be like a basket to clean. So I'd like spray it. And then she would be like, Bailey, you, you need to help this guest. And I would like turn around and I would like help her. And then as soon as she'd walk away, she'd be like, clean the baskets. <laughs> and like, <laughs> wouldn't give you a second to like realize like even a second to like think because she was like right there just waiting to tell you to do something and it just got old fast. <laughs> I want to tell one more story before I move on to why I left. I was scheduled for 5 a.m. on a Wednesday morning even though I said I can't work Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings. I think they scheduled me every single Wednesday morning because that's when we got shipments. We would get like our, our semi truck would come in on a Wednesday and a Sunday. And so we, we didn't have like a back room to store anything. So as soon as the shipment would come in, it would have to go like right out on the shelves. So we'd have to come in early to do it. There was one girl that was scheduled that morning with us that I'd never seen before. And at this point I had pretty much met everybody. So we were waiting around until like 8 a.m. waiting on the truck to come because it's scheduled to come between like five and eight, something like that. So we called to figure out like why the truck hadn't came yet. And they were like, oh yeah, there's not a truck scheduled to come to your location at all this week. And so, like, I mean, we're just unorganized like that. Like, that's just another day. What, what can we say? So the other, they were like, okay, we'll just like do some inventory stuff and then you can leave. Because we were scheduled, I think, until noon. So I went back with this other girl that I had met before to do inventory stuff with. I'm so glad this day happened. She said... She used to be a manager, and then when the general manager came in, all of the managers and most people left, and then all the girls that kind of like stayed behind became the managers, so it kind of makes sense, like why it was so unorganized and why they didn't know what they were doing. But she had to stay to keep her benefits because she got like, she was working in like a warehouse with her boyfriend and she couldn't get like medical like insurance yet so she had to stay at Ulta and just work like a little bit to keep her insurance. And so she was telling me the tea. It, I guess it didn't used to be as bad as it was. It was just like all of the new management 
the new general manager nobody liked her but most people don't like new people like as soon as like a new manager comes in like they don't like you the the reason i left that hospital job that i mentioned before the office job that i have now is because they redid all of management and then like i left and that's really common to happen and like the general manager too like i didn't really have a big problem with her like she was a nice girl and she I felt like she respected the workers, like the other, the lower managers had like no respect for like the, like seasonal workers or anything like that, but the, the general manager, she was like really nice, like she knew how to talk to you, she wasn't like, she didn't really talk to you like you were super incompetent, other than like that first day I was there, but I didn't have a problem with her, it was just obvious that nobody respected her, like nobody liked her, and she wasn't really running, like it, she was running a circus, so... I don't think it was really all her fault, but I don't know. The funniest part for why I'm no longer there. For most of the video, you've caught probably how scheduling is a big deal. They schedule you last minute. Also, I don't know if I've uploaded any of those videos yet, but I've been really sick since August. I've been just like vomiting for no reason. I don't know. I went to a doctor like last Monday. It's been like two weeks was the first doctor I went to. And since then I've had like a couple doctor's appointments, tests done, I had surgery, I, and that's all happened in like two weeks because I've been sick. So they scheduled me on New Year's Day. And so I came in on New Year's Day and I was in like that morning. And then I was also scheduled for Sunday. So New Year's was like a Friday. So I was like, oh, I'm, I was talking to like one of the managers and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go home tonight and like have dinner with my family and like whatever, but I have to be right back in on Sunday at like 6 a.m. Like, so I'm not gonna be able to spend that much time with them. And she was like, oh, I can see what I can do. And I wasn't like asking her to like change the schedule or anything. She's like, let me see what I can do. I might be able to get you off on Sunday. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And so she said, if I wanted to stay late on New Year's Day, then I could have Sunday off. And I was like, no, like I need to go home on New Year's Day to have dinner with my family. Like that's what's more important than Sunday. So I ended up going home. I called my parents when I got in, the tr in my car to say like, get off work. I'll be headed home in a second. And they were like, no, don't come, it's pleasing lane, the roads are bad, don't come home. I'm like, oh, okay, fine, and everything worked out. So I went to my apartment and just hung out. And then on Saturday night, I got really sick and was vomiting and was up all night. And I called Alta to call off because I had been vomiting and were in a global pandemic. And so I can't go in when I'm vomiting. And so I called and the phone goes through its automated store hours and it goes through the automated store hours and it goes through the automated store hours and it never gives you like an extension to leave a message or an extension for employees or an extension for a call up nothing nothing so i was like okay well nobody's in the store yet but at 6 a.m when i'm scheduled somebody will be in the store so i'll call it six call it six nothing call it 6 10 nothing and i just let it go through the automated store hours and i had it like lying on the pillow at like 6 10 and it was just going and going and going and eventually my boyfriend <laughs> lying in bed he's like forget about it like forget it's a circus like that's not what he said but that's what i'm thinking to myself is like this is normal they're they're unorganized and like they don't have a call-off system so I hung up, went to sleep, and I got up to check my schedule because they, they had it made it, they make their schedule like last minute. So Sunday was the last day that I was scheduled, and then on like Sunday night, they'll make the schedule for the next day, and so then you'll know if you're scheduled for Monday morning. You won't know until Sunday night. That was the very last day that the schedule was made for, and then they never put me on the schedule again, which I kind of can understand because I'm seasonal, so I was only supposed to be there for like another three weeks maybe and i mean i had like really really great like sales like my loyalty accounts and my master cards like i signed i harassed so many people into master cards and loyalty programs and like got people to buy like extra stuff whatever and i was supposed to get like gladys and stuff that i never did so i'm not like upset but i mean i am but i can understand from like their perspective that they were like oh and i call no show but the man to put to call when the manager is in the store and then like nobody to answer the phone like not even the manager <sighs> i mean they're not man they like they call they have a title that's a manager but they're not like they don't do management stuff they don't have management experience they don't know what they're doing so i kind of get like if you hire clowns expect the circus i don't know i can see from their perspective why they wouldn't schedule me again but at the same time how incredibly unprofessional to not even call and be like hey uh we're not gonna schedule you again 
or like nothing. They could not even communicate anything. So I'm not upset. If I could go back and do it again, I probably would do it again. I'd do everything the same. Like I wouldn't do anything different. If you're looking at getting a job at Delta, I just, just wanna, it might have just been my location, but I just want to like warn you, it's a little crazy, it's a little chaotic, it's a little unorganized, and that kind of stuff makes me get a little, get a little warm and anxious. <laughs> so I, had a, I, was, I was uncomfortable with all of that, like even being in the back room, like the back room was so unorganized, I would just like be, like stuff has to be clean and like stuff for me to not be anxious, so... It wasn't, it wasn't super comfortable. Do I have anything else I want to say? I kind of want to make like a part two of just like stories about working there. Like I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I knew that I was going to make this video. So I started like typing stuff up like the second I started. So I would like remember every little detail. It was fun. Like I said, if I could go back and do it again, I'd do it again. I'd do everything the same. So I was a seasonal worker. I can't remember how many hours I worked, but I know I just got my last paycheck and I made about $500. And when I was there, my goal was to be able to get my lip filler done again. And I wanted to like make it as like extra money. And I think I hit that goal. So thank you, Alta. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy your time there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, comment any questions, comment your favorite part of the video, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of me. Um, but thank you for watching. Bye.